Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm joined today by Himanshu Das, who is the co-founder and chief data officer for Tatia Earth. They have been supplying us with uh, satellite-based uh, data on blast furnaces in Southeast Asia, which goes into our Southeast Asian report. Welcome, Himanshu. Thank you, Thomas. Hi, everybody. Nice to talk to all of you, and thank you, Kalanis, for inviting me to give a few words on our company, and also I'm really excited to speak with you. My pleasure. So um, tell us how exactly you get this blast furnace activity data. Thank you, Thomas, for your uh, question. Uh, but before I directly go to the blast furnace uh, issue, let me just give a few words on how we came up with this whole concept of alternative database insights and how we started that year and why still and followed by a few of the measured commodities, right? Um, so at that year, we have realized, we realized like, you know, there are very important economic indicators, uh, be it the commodities production, uh, like metal, hot, hot metal production, the iron ore inventory, the coal inventory, how much is there. So they are tracked by lots of sections, uh, be it the commodity traders, be it the hedge funds, be it the government itself, because they actually influence the uh, policy uh, and frameworks, right? Um, but what we have seen is usually such indicators come late, be it the month in or quarter in, and sometimes they are not even there. For many countries, the results are not there. And sometimes they're even manipulated, right? So that's where we came up with this concept of while traditional data has this issue, why don't we try some alternative sets of data? So what I mean by alternative sets of data, right? So currently with the development in technology and democratization of data, lots and lots of new data types are available. Some of the key ones perhaps would be the satellite data, the geospatial base insights, the data from geolocation data, the shipping data, AIS signals, the IoT data, which is going to be very important in the coming days, right? So we thought like, if we use these type of data sets to pro, uh, provide near real-time and factual insights, that can be a very good advantage for lots of sections in the uh, society. It has economic as well as social benefits as well. And that's where we came up with uh, this like art providing real-time insights on key economic indicators. Uh, now, when there are key economic indicators, of course, there are lots and lots of economic indicators, importantly. But we found that it, the metal commodities are a very high demand and key area where uh, there are lots of issues, uh, be it the lag, uh, but they are of profound importance. And if you take the example of steel, right? Steel is the backbone of any all the industrial activity. And if we can monitor steel production in the major economic uh, countries, be it the China, Japan, South Korea, even the Southeast Asian countries now, that actually gives an indication of how the world is going to develop, right? Be it the iron ore inventory that's directly relevant for the steel production, be it the coal inventory. So that's where how we started with the metal commodities, first of all. Now, in this metal commodities, Again, why we took steel or the pig iron production, which is actually relevant to your uh, query uh, blast furnace. It's actually the backbone of any industrial activity, right? Steel production. And currently it's, it's produced and then it's produced mostly by China, India, and most of the developing countries where the data is not easily available as well. So we thought of leveraging satellite data to determine the steel production, right? Now, what we have found uh, is usually in, in a blast furnace and be it the blast furnace or the heat producing areas in a mill, like the sintering plant, the coke oven plant, they emit heat, right? So there is a radiation from these plants. And this radiation is actually captured by certain bands of different few types of satellites. Not all satellites, but yeah, different types of satellites store this information. Now you have to, as digital signals, right? So you have to, you now, if what we have seen is once you convert these digital signals to understandable data uh, using our own indexing algorithm, laws of physics and all, we found that this is very highly correlate, correlated and proportional to the production of steel that is happening in that particular meal. And that was, and, and these insights uh, that we can be able to derive is actually, you know, like today I can determine how much it is radiated and from that I can get the insights. 
So that is how we uh, came up uh, with the, the, you know, with the use case of determining the blast furnace uh, activity. And currently, uh, we we are able to give this as an activity, uh, which is actually measurement of how much activity index, I would say, which is actually measurement of how much uh, activity is happening inside the blast furnace. Thanks. So when you're compiling this data, uh, how do you source that data? And what are the technical aspects that you need to consider when producing your index? Yeah, so currently, uh, we are using mostly public source of data. Uh, like the Sentinel, uh, the, uh, the the Landsat, the Modis, and there, there are certain commercial satellites also you can use. We have been looking at that, but the, once you use them, uh, the cost goes high, and it's sometimes the affordability issue, right? So what we are trying at our end is is to make our model and algorithms strong enough to derive quality in, insights from publicly available sources. Only. Now, while doing that, there are a few issues. Uh, first of all, uh, issue of frequency, right? Now, when I say issue of frequency, uh, data is sometimes, uh, usually say if you are using Sentinel data, it is usually available five days a week, the one with the good resolution. But there is another type of satellite which is giving at a daily level, uh, but the resolution is not that good, right? And then because of that, you may not be able to get that quality insights which you can derive from a high resolution satellite image. Now, to overcome that, we have um, got our own algorithms to, we call it the fusion algorithms to gather, you know, high quality data or high resolution images from the low resolution images, which thereby addresses the frequencies, right? Now, there are again the issue of uh, cloud. Uh, usually, uh, that is an issue uh, which is, we have seen mostly in the monsoon times in Southeast Asia and also in uh, India also, uh, like the, the monsoon prone period of around three uh, to four months data is not available because once there is cloud, you can just cannot have the quality information. Uh, we are currently looking into using alternative sets of data for to, live, to overcome that. Uh, one of that will be the SAR images, which is synthetic aperture quality, uh, which can actually bypass the clouds. There are also uh, we are also looking into how to use specific bands of the satellite, which can actually bypass the cloud issue. And we are working on that. So we are pretty hopeful uh, that um, once we are able to leverage these two uh, areas, we can have a pretty continuous high quality uh, set of data. Great. So um, obviously the, the data that we're using at the moment uh, from you is blast furnace activity data, but you have other kinds of data that you're developing as well, right? Tell me about your other projects. Right, so yeah, we, we, we have actually developed, uh, we are actually working on some other interesting products. Uh, while working with blast furnace, uh, we have realized like if we can get the iron or inventory, which is there in the measure ports in the world, uh, that is actually a very, very uh, you know, very good indicator, pre-indicator of the steel production. Besides that itself being a very good indicator, economic indicator uh, as such. So we are currently working on developing, or we have actually completed the iron ore inventory index product as well, and we have got some good results. Uh, next in pipeline is the coal inventory index, uh, which is obviously because of this whole triangle set of important commodities like coal, iron ore, and steel, highly correlated. So we are working on that as well we've just recently started and we feel once we complete these three products um, that will give you a very good and holistic view of the overall ferro's industry uh, followed by that we are also thinking of working on the ferro scrap because that is also having lots of demand mostly in the developed countries where the lots of scrap is used and uh, we are also working thinking in pipeline we have the aluminium uh, the copper and the zinc, and yeah these are the more important set of metal commodities we are work, uh, looking into. And hope we have uh, thought of because of the importance uh, of emissions and that actually uses the same satellite base inside. So we have actually explored that and are doing a little bit of research on that. But again, that is just at the evolution stage. Yeah, it sounds very interesting. And what about your geographical reach? Because obviously at the moment, right. we've data in China and Southeast Asia and India also, but uh, can that be replicated internationally? Yeah, 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 of course. So that is the advantage of the technology that we're building, right? It's highly scalable. Uh, the only thing, say, for the hot metal, like 
hot metal index the only thing first you have to do is you know you have to identify the location and you know mark out the heat emitting areas and once you do that for the mills and you just put that in our model and every week we can get the data for that uh, because the coverage of this mills is always there right uh, so we have uh, started with uh, the, of course uh, we started with the china chinese mills they are of the most high production and critical importance for the whole world. Uh, but because of the scale and the size and the number of meals, it will take some time to complete the, and the Sina index, right? Mm -hmm. So we are working on that in parallel. We have recently completed the Southeast Asian index. Uh, we have also covered few of the important, we have actually completed the South Korean index as well, uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, important country. And uh, we are, uh, we have also done some uh, coverage on the key meals in India. And in future, we want to go to the European markets and the American markets as well. So that is in our pipeline, or stage by stage, we are going on the covering the other geographic areas. That will be very interesting. We look forward to seeing those developments come to fruition. Sure. Thank you. Uh, for joining me today, Himanshu. Thank you. Thanks for your talk, Thomas, and hope to talk to you again. Thank you.